Does anyone want to start? Introduce their character? Sure, I'll go. Um, I'm going to be playing Misha, who is the torch. Um, Misha is uses she, her pronouns, and she is a um, loud, excitable, happy, joyful um, provider type. So she likes to make food for people. She likes to collect all her, the children to her. She likes to tell stories and be that kind of community center where she can just like watch over everybody and take care of people and give them what they need. Um, she has fiery eyes. She has a little bit of a wrinkled face. She's, I'm thinking probably early fifties. She wears coarse fiber clothing, but she's drawn sigils onto them herself. Um, and she conducts rituals. So she tries to gather people to her and have them um, engage in these rituals that she does, such as the rites of passage and her coffee ceremony. Um, my key relationships are uh, one with a bitter ex and two with the students I must teach. And the question I would like to ask, Bethany, this is up to you. Um, one of my questions is, why did we break up? Uh, would you like to have been in a relationship with me? Um, man, I, I want to say yes, but I also think I just got here. Um, which, like, if you're not from here, could work. But if you are from here, uh, it was it, it was must have been a very short relationship. Or uh, or what's the other question? <laughs> um, did you say that you were maybe like providing things for? Oh, you know what? Yeah, before? yeah. So I would have I would have visited here before. So yeah, that works. That'd be cool. Okay, let's do that. So, uh, Lark, why did we break up? Um. Ironically, we broke up because, like, I didn't want to be tied down, and yet here I am, trying desperately to be accepted as a member of this community and stay forever. Great. Sounds like maybe Misha has uh, some options to maybe get back in your yep. good graces. Yep. Um, finally, just as a heads up, my lure is whenever somebody participates in one of my rituals for the first time. So come have coffee with me. Super cool. Yes. That's Misha. So, uh, yeah, my character is Lark. Um, they use they, them pronouns, which I did not fill in yet. Um, and their gender is void, uh, which I think in, in this case is just like refusing to, like gender is not a thing, you know, um, almost like angry, not just a gender, but like anti-gender. Um, uh, I have a tired frame and calloused hands, and uh, my my look is my old uniform, which is blood stained. Uh, I have a dog. Um, I have one other thing, which uh, kind of a lot of them. Some of them are completely inconsequential, and others are uh, very consequential to the enclave. So, uh, what breed is the dog? Let's see. Um, I think like a medium sized uh, some kind of medium sized like herding type dog maybe hey hey yes exact yes that'll work Australian shepherd um perfect that's or you know something vaguely like mostly Australian shepherd because you know it's probably also like you know, it, it it could be half dog half coyote I don't know um uh cool so um yeah before i got here i was a scavenger uh, and i lived alone out in the wasteland uh before injury forced me to seek out a bigger community uh i think i was like ambushed by some one of the one of the outlying gangs uh and uh they beat me up and i, I think i have like a prosthetic limb an arm or leg and um, broke that. So like I dragged myself into town and um, got uh, the names here, Finch to uh, fix my leg and patch me up. And I have stayed here ever since. 
We are all birds. We're, we are Robin, a finch, and a lark. <laughs> a theme one here. Um, cool. So my key relationships with the people I fled from. Uh, and the gentle soul who invited me to share their bed. And I, I kind of wonder now if that is Misha. So that works pretty well. So like, uh, it's, it, there's, there's, there's probably still something going on. Or it's like some... Uh, there's there's definitely some tension there, I think. I don't know whether it's good or bad. Um, I have a question. Um, one of my key relationships is a bitter ex. Are you bitter or do I have another bitter ex? I think you have another bitter ex. Because, like, why just one, you know? Sure. I, I don't think I'm bitter. You, you might be bitter about, like, I'm the one who left, right? So uh, I don't have any, I mean, just because I have no right to be bitter doesn't mean I can't be, but... Um, I, I don't think I am. I think I'm kind of awkward because I did not expect this to happen, but uh, I don't think it's bitter necessarily. It might be. We'll find out. Um, and let's see, when to ask left. Uh, look. So Finch, why do you wish I had never arrived? I think... I specialize more in like overtly mechanical things or the opposite of whatever your prosthetic is. And so I'm having a really hard time fixing it and it is embarrassing. Okay. Or actually, I don't think we've really met you yet, have we? Have you been here very long? I just realized I was on mute. I, I think I've been here for maybe uh, maybe a couple of weeks at this point. Okay. Um, so like I I've met everybody, I think, um, just to sort of get that out of the way. Unless unless we think that would be interesting to to have that like meeting a stranger, but. Um, I think it's better to just sort of start with like, you know, relationships kind of already established. Um, cool. Uh, I think that's all I have. Yep. So Finch. All right. So Finch, um, they, them, they work with, I think more, like cybernetic sort of technology. Um, they have a uh, couple rooms in the compound set aside for just things that they pick through to work with. Their body is kind of almost more machine, I think, than human at this point. So I've put down a gender. Mm. Praising eyes, clean hands, because you have to when you're working with uh, bodies. And there's visible technology on mine. Here's a mask, because here's the least important part of the body. Um, but I also handle recycling for the community. Um, probably applies to anything, really because you can repurpose a lot of things here, not just mechanical parts. But I also serve, I think, as kind of a medic for people who have less than human bodies. Um, there's a void kid who needs my maintenance to stay alive. And I get all my uh, parts from a black marketeer. Uh, Robin, do we want that to be you? Um, I think you've got another, uh, like a separate question that you'll need to that you'll need to ask me. So I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't want. I have, like for my currencies. I've got dependency and lingering debts. And lingering debts is probably like accurate for that. But I think that that's just like I think that's just everybody, right? I think that's just like a, like I'll collect when it's 
like when it's convenient for oh. me to collect. So are they debts people owe you or debts you owe other people? Well, they're, they're, it's my desired currency. So it's, um, so it's what people would owe me, I think. That would fit in really well. If I owe you a small fortune. But would you rather be an NPC? I, 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 I don't want to have to collect from you. I, <laughs> <laughs> well, then maybe there's a reason you haven't yet. Oh, that's true. That could be. No, that's uh, I'm I'm okay with uh, with going either way. Whatever that you could like. be a, an interesting, um, an interesting thing if it comes up that you like. Oh, I'm I really have to collect now, even though I don't want to, or or you could choose not to. It sounds like a really cool relationship to me. Honestly, we'll do it then. Okay, and I have a question to ask person to my left, which on the screen is Robin, or the character keeper, is that right? Are we going by the yeah. character keeper or how I think we're just doing that on the character keeper. Yeah. Okay. What broken thing do you have that I could fix? Well, it'd be really easy if it was like something mechanical or like body or, parts or something. Since we have this weird commercial relationship almost mixed up with what seems like a lot of emotions. What did I lend to you recently? Maybe I like sort of, hey, I can't pay you right now, but I can give you this thing instead. Oh, things are way harder though. Things are things are just things. That's less fun. It can be a not physical thing then. That's true. So I have a suggestion maybe. Um I want to hear it. Okay, so like I I got here a couple weeks ago and the first thing I did is I went to Finch and what if what I brought is what I paid Finch who then like has now loaned it to Robin that could work okay would it have been tech um let me look at my options again here uh my options are an old pistol a water purifier uh an inhaler a concealed knife a truck photo albums, a phone that still got service, a holy book, stockpiles of food, a dog, or stolen money. Mm. And I mean, given our uh, previous like um, relationship, that photo album could be porn. It certainly could be. That's a that's a very that's a very bespoke uh, <laughs> very bespoke <laughs> uh, piece of work. Um, Oh jeez, I don't know. I don't know. Um uh yeah, I'm with uh I'm with uh Joao uh in the chat. Uh but uh I don't know. I don't know. I'm having a hard time picking. Uh you is it okay we can if... discover that in play? Yeah. Well, is it okay yeah. if we like come back or... to the question? Yeah. 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 Maybe something cool. else will come maybe something else will come out in the like in the immediate future, or like even if like I know what once we have once we do enclave stuff, that might also yeah. like bring something nice. forth. Okay, sounds good. I think that's everything I have then. Okay, um, so Robin, uh, she her pronouns is the hawker. Um, I am probably going to have to fill in a lot of this, uh, what some of these things mean as we play, because I'm just like. I'm like starved for input right now. I know you are all giving me like lots of really, really great stuff, but uh, I just don't know. Like I, I just have a hard time without like having a full left more full picture of how to fit things in. Um, uh, so uh, Hawker, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, Robin's uh, gender is my favorite gender, which is the dagger daddy. Um, and uh, I'm doubling down on the, uh, the knife imagery uh, with her stilettos. Uh, which pair lovely with her formal leathers. Um, uh, she has an honest face and a fresh manicure uh, and is the uh, the uh, uh, best person in the Enclave uh, to get three really important things. Uh, coffee, uh, which has a, which has a, a ritual uh, connotation. Um, turns out the, uh, if you, if you make coffee from the leftover grounds the second time, uh that's actually oh 
can I can I throw something out that we were talking about in the uh, in the pre hangouts chat? Um, uh, so uh, we had talked about, and this doesn't have to necessarily be a thing. We had, uh, but we had talked about like need for purity as a potential um, like point of contention uh, uh, in the enclave, and uh, and and I think that it's I think that it's like a bad omen to reuse coffee grounds. Um, so it's so that's why it's so important to uh, to get uh, to get fresh uh, as uh, as frequently as possible um, because that uh, that drives rituals uh, among other things. Um, I also provide two other things that are uh, uh, you know one person's uh, one person's art is uh, another person's smut and vice versa. Um, the the line can be blurred, um, uh, and so I think that probably. Uh, like just jumping to my key relationships. One of my key relationships is the pissy killjoy next door, uh, who uh, I think is uh, is super not into what I think is artistic. Um, I don't know what that is yet, but uh, but I think that uh, I think that they probably think that uh, that it is just a waste. And if I uh, if I had any sense at all, uh, I would just focus on the thing that the, that people uh, uh, have a a, a more uh immediate and obvious use for um rather than anything uh anything academic um i also have a cute relationship of the wasteland salvager who brings in what i need who um it sounds like lark it might have been you for a while but is it still uh, you know is is that something that i'm still going to lean on you for is that someone is that maybe someone else um yeah i don't know have you found a replacement or are you like okay it's time you know you get, get back out there um, I don't know. Um, you had a, uh, you had a prosthetic leg. Is that what the, uh, yeah. or yeah, I'm sorry, just a, ju I'm sorry, just a, I just see pros uh, prosthesis. Uh, yeah, I think it, I think it's prosthetic leg. Okay. Um, and it still doesn't work super well. Yeah. Oh, I think that, uh, I think that I probably have to have, uh, I think I probably have to cultivate a new, um, oh, that's great. That I I still think I still think you're gonna you're gonna be good for this. Uh, like I don't think you're staying. Oh yeah, and I'm totally like I I don't think. Um, I'm not sure if I know I'm staying yet. Um, I, I think. At the very least, I have I have not told you that like yeah this uh this this arrangement of me salvaging things is probably not going to continue. Yeah, just like as soon as Finch gets you fixed up, like we are back yep, in business. Yep. That's okay. Exactly. Perfect. Okay, I'm just gonna pan in Lark there. Because you're not um, lingering debts, I probably have some to you. Right. Uh, well, I, I I think that I probably may have even had some to you, but that's the that's the thing about the uh, that's the thing about uh, a, a lingering debt. Um, it might never it might never be called on. Yeah. You know. Uh, we will uh, we will see i don't know could go that could go either direction and i like that um so uh oh but my other depend my other desired currency is dependency and you are uh you are like racking up a lot of that right now oh yeah. we might no we might be able to make this work we could we could call this good this will be fine cool. um okay Ooh, i just scrolled to tomorrow um so that's desired currencies of dependency and lingering debts, key relationships of, uh, I'm going to name my pissy killjoy next door in a little bit um, when I'm not paying attention to what you all are telling me. Um, I have a lure. Uh, I think you all have a lure. So uh, when someone offers me a new gig or gets hooked on my supply, you gain a token, which is super cool. Um, if only there were someone whose specific job it was to make sure that people come for coffee on a regular basis. If only. Oh, shoot. Um, and uh, so I get to choose one to ask left. So, Pity, why have I been sizing you up recently? Um, I think I think you're really sure I know something about the, the future of your business that I'm not telling you. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> oh, I was really hoping the answer was definitely not. <laughs> oh, that's great. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, I think that that's it for me for right now.
All right, so I guess it's my turn. Uh, I'll be playing Pity. Uh, they use they them pronouns. Pity uh, is an iris. They were they were touched by the psychic maelstrom, maelstrom whatever however you pronounce that word, and that uh, that has given them uh, powers to see the past and the future. Although it's not always uh, under their control. Um, there, I picked uh, gargoyle as their gender, which I see as them being uh, a gender and uh, uh, like most of the time, but sometimes like I'm, I'm thinking gargoyles like from fantasy that sometimes move and act. So sometimes they have this uh, uh, desire to like, uh, uh, present as a as a different uh, gender, which might be anything. Uh, so they they're very slim. They have uh, very calculating eyes. So uh, they wear casual clothes that are always the same, and, and like they're always wearing the same outfit, and they never shower or bathe in any way. So uh, as I uh, mentioned, the, their psychic gifts are ghost echoes with. Which is uh, I'm seeing as the, they've been able to see what happened somewhere in the past and fortune telling where to uh, see the future. And the one problem is that when they were touched by the psychic maelstrom, they saw how and when they, they're going to die. And that was not very cheerful. So they've been a bit uh, like most of most of the time they're not very like enthusiastic about life because uh, they know how it's going to end. Uh, their key relationships are uh, their sub. Uh, they, the, there's, uh, they have a uh, storytelling kink. So it's, it's all based on telling stories. So they basically, they'll basically tell stories to their sub and their sub never knows uh, if the story is something from their future or not. Uh, and the slowly dying drag mama who's been uh, ease, um, basically being reassuring about uh, her past. So I, I, I have seen her past and I'm always, she's always thinking she lived a terrible life and I'm always telling her, no, you did fine, everything's okay. Uh, and I have a question to ask uh, Misha, which is uh, what secret did I, did I learn about you yesterday? Um, the secret that you learned was that I have been hoarding um, food goods, like really nice bits of food. Um, I've been keeping them away from the rest of the community. Cool. <laughs> That's great. Thanks. Yeah, I, I think I'm done. What's your lure? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I forgot. Uh, my lure is uh, if you ask me to use my psychic powers on you, you get uh, a token. Oh. And mine, because I didn't say it is when people bring me things, precious things, to fix the gain a token. Are these on the character sheet anywhere? I'm not, they I'm are. just missing it. Or? Yes. Um, they're under the, they're like um, row six. Mm, okay. Uh, right under the um, play or playbook name. Uh, mine, which I don't think I said, uh, is... When someone gives me an opportunity to prove myself to the community, you gain a token. Very cool. Okay. Um, speaking of the community, we have, we, we get to create that too. So, um, wait, now that's setting elements. That's another thing. Uh, so that's on the, the third sheet here. I think the third, yep. 
Um, under visuals and conflicts, there's uh, the drop down should have a list of all of them. So um, I know we discussed a little bit of this in the chat beforehand, um, but we can have, I didn't realize I could have this many, even though I, I made the character sheet, so I, you'd think I would remember. Um, but yeah, we can have three things that are in conflict and up to five visuals, um, which means, you know, we, we kind of, if you want to, we can each pick um, one visual uh, or, you know, you can, I don't know, we'll figure it out. I want to pick. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, I want to, I want to pick a visual that we had talked about in the chat because everyone seemed super into it and I want to stick with it. And that is outdoor kitchens. Um, like when I was, when I was thinking about, uh, kitchens, like I think of, like, I think of kitchens, like in, in my life as like showing up as a very gendered space. And I like the, I like the outdoor of it being, uh, like very much not that I see, like, I see kitchens as being a place that like, are very um like very commonly used for like having a conversation that other people that you don't want other people to hear uh potentially and that's uh like that doesn't exist when that's when it's outdoors um so those the, like those were the those were the things that kind of drew me to that as a uh, as a as an element so that's what i like about it cool so do you think there are like many of these kitchens or are there like a few that you know, everyone uses or, uh... um, I love if it's like, if it's like makeshift. Um, and so like, you know, if we've, if we've, uh, if we put together, uh, like a handful of like different fire pits or, um, or different, uh, like any, any, any place that we can get, uh, like electrical working, uh, you know, we might have uh, we might have an electrical stove or like this super dangerous gas stove that probably uh, that will probably work most of the time. Um, like, like, like I, I, I love having like whatever it is that whatever it is that we can pull together in order to do this. But like also like uh, I, I, I don't know what the reason for I don't know what the in what the in enclave reason for it all being outside is, but I'm excited to find out. Um, super dangerous gas stoves would be so okay. True story. When I was a kid, um, my my family did not have electricity. We lived too far from the the road that like the power company wouldn't run uh, power lines out to us. But uh, my mom got a propane stove, and my dad was so afraid of like gas leaks and explosions that he's like okay we can have a protein pro, uh, propane stove but it has to be outside so like our kitchen was on the porch um and i can definitely see like yeah if we're using propane or other you know um there are camp stoves that use like gasoline uh we could have like a giant one of those but something like that you wouldn't want to have it inside right yeah oh that's perfect i love yeah. it it's a really good idea. My house burned when there was a kid. We had a gas stove. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. yeah, it happens. It does. So. Um, cool. Anything else jumping out at someone? Um, I'm going to go with also the one that I said in the chat. I think I like abandoned complex quite a lot. Um, Same. And Bethany, you mentioned a couple ideas for abandoned complexes that I really like. Um, so an agriculture or bioengineering lab at a long closed down university is super cool. Um, when I initially said it, I was also thinking of like a, like a, like a campus for like Google or something like that. I was imagining yeah. like, what is like, what are these place is going to look like when they're just totally overrun with vegetation and stuff like that. That would also be really cool. I'm curious to know what, what people are thinking for that. I like, I like a, like a big office park that. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but that also, you know, has a, uh, you know, like a bioengineering company has a, has a building there or something or had a building there. Um, because yeah, because mine is mutant plants. Uh, and, um, you know, mutant plants don't have to be good. They can be the only food plants that'll actually grow here and now because this this lab made them, and like we now have these in our in our garden, and like this is kind of a 
I don't know if this is like our, our like community secret that's carefully guarded or we trade them to other people or what. Um, I had kind of a wild idea of what like the what the nearby world might look like. Um, th but this is also me being like, oh, this is a thing that's like close to me. And so I'm just going to say it um, if I like if I can offer a suggestion about the sure. uh, about all that. Um, uh, I live really close to a very large land grant university, uh, which has uh, which has like like thinking of that in thinking of that in the course of the apocalypse, like I could see that very easily being like divvied up into like different sections and different factions, all with like yeah. very like hyper specialized uh, like things available to them in those areas. Um, not, I, I, I'm not trying to get like an extra pick or anything. I'm just like throwing that out there. It's like, oh, that's that jumps to mind. No, it's funny. That's that is exactly the image that I had in mind when I suggested that originally. I also I also live a mile from a, a very large university, and uh, yeah, so I that that was immediately oh, abandoned complex plus mutant plants. Hey, um, but I I am very into both of those ideas. So. Yeah, uh, but also fuck Google. So <laughs> yeah, that too. Taking no, away our no, easy hangouts and stuff. Either. I think my pick for the Enclave is going to be quietude. I like the idea of it being just not necessarily open, but like there's not a whole lot else around. And we're kind of removed and we have all this land. So it's, it's almost peaceful here. Yeah. Not sure that that'll hold, but Uh, I have an idea that I want to run through people. I was thinking that uh, maybe the reason we like set our community in this abandoned complex is that the area where we live is now flooded. So, like, so we have to occupy these uh, buildings, and and also like that's why we have these mutant plants from the university because they they're the only thing that survived this uh, huge flood. Uh, flood that happened and maybe there are other communities in other complex uh like industrial complexes but uh ours is in this flooded place that's cool so so our so like is the land we live on flooded and like our buildings are only and we have to like go between buildings by boat or yeah uh, are we like on an island that's that's what i was thinking basically if we're actually setting this in Mountain View, it could be that the bay just came up. Yes, uh, well, that's that's why we need the mutant plants. They're salt resistant. Amazing. Yes. That sounds great. Let it Google. Yeah. Oh my God, I love it already. Could also be why it's quiet. You have to take a boat to get here. Yeah, it was another link I made. Like, there's not a lot of people around because. Yeah, because like ordinarily I'd be like, well, there, you know, it seems like an obvious place there would be a lot of people, but not if it's flooded. Cool. It's gonna put a put a put a real kink in the plans of the motorcycle gangs. Yeah, they'll have to be jet ski gangs. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> it's water worlds. Oh, that's right. That's that's a water world thing, isn't it? I forgot about that. Okay, so we're looking at conflicts now. Um, yeah. What was our? So we have outdoor kitchens, abandoned complex, quietude, mutant plants, and flooding. Oh, that that is five. Okay, cool. There was just an extra space at the bottom. Uh, yeah. So what conflicts can we can we uh, derive out of this and our you know our characters? Uh, 
Um, can I jump back to the PCs and answer a question? Sure. Uh, because I think that I've definitely uh, been lent a jet ski by Finch. Awesome. Okay. Oh yeah. Um, that that could. I I obviously don't have a truck. Um, but I could have a boat instead of a truck. I I like it more if this is something that Finch relies on because that's like this is my jet ski that I yeah. jet ski. Yes, yeah. nice. Like you like you know all the things about it too. Like uh like it, this is this is not the kind that uh, that does well if you uh if you tip it over. Get uh, water in the engine. It's going to be um, very bad. Yes. Perfect. Excellent. Beautiful. Like if this is something that like the only real mode of transportation we've got, I probably have a couple, but like, you know, there's always something in the shop. Right. Except that one because I take such good care of it. Perfect. Sorry. Thank you for uh, allowing me the indulgence of hopping back and forth in this thing. Oh yeah. No, I mean, there's, you know, the, the characters affect the world, the world affects the characters, the, yeah. Um, I think there's probably a lot of jumping back and forth. Um, so let's see our conflicts out of this stuff. What kind of conflicts would come up? Uh, someone had suggested need for purity. A good one. Um, I think with the with the salt water, I think that probably like uh, turns on a, a couple of other things too. Yeah, there's so many different senses in which that can be read. And uh... if we're dealing with mechanical things or like anything made of metal, that would be really important. Mm. Got to keep the salt from getting everywhere. Awesome. Mm. Also, drinking water would be an issue. Oh, never mind. Yeah. That's that's what I brought. That was one of my options. Right. It was a water purifier. Well, I thought uh, Finch was already in charge of recycling, which has all kinds oh, of horrific connotations. That's even better. Yes. Never mind. Uh, well, actually, would it be interesting horrific. to bring like a legit water purifier into this? That, or would it? Be? Oh, that would be luxurious. Like, oh, now you have competition. <laughs> To be a reason for you to stay. <laughs> Who has the best water in town? <laughs> yeah. If you think it's Finch, you're in luck. Um, so we have a couple of references to the void, and one of the conflicts is politics of the void. Are people interested in fleshing out the void at all right now and maybe figuring out uh, what that means? I like the idea yeah. of being tied to the water somehow. Yeah, there's also like we a have an ocean right on the other side of those mountains. So yeah. maybe the ocean is the void. Yeah, because like there we won't have any communities around there, maybe. But then uh what the, the one of the characters has a connection who's a void kid, what would that mean? Does the void just mean like being on the ocean like the void is just being away from mm. communities do you want it to be stranger i think i think so so we have the psychic maelstrom which maybe is more active over that you know open ocean like maybe the ocean maybe it comes from the ocean somehow and yeah, like the maelstrom is a literal so maelstrom the source of it yeah the Why void. Are we living on the coast you guys <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, 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 be linked with the like the apocalypse being related to like the flooding. Yeah, yeah, that would be really cool. And and so the void kid could be someone who like one day went, you know, went out on a boat and then like came back three years later thinking it was a day or something ridiculous like that, and uh, or like is is just considered to be like changed by the void mm, maybe that like it causes his body to start failing in some way and so because yeah. i have to maintain him um so maybe they like just started replacing parts of him piecemeal as they started failing yeah 
Yeah, maybe they were like drinking salt water or something. <laughs> oh, but, yeah, pretty good. I kind of like the idea that like, no one knows why it's going wrong. Yeah, maybe more mysterious than just salt water, but there's some kind of unknown contamination or like spiritual energy or something we don't know. Um, maybe it's ghosts living at the bottom of the ocean who like are very angry at us or something. Um, my gender is void, which uh, now now makes it a little different. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not sure how a gender could be. I like it. I'm just not sure how to pin that down. Um, cool. So politics of the void. Um, what? So what? What are politics about this? This be like. Uh, is this a thing? Um, is it a religious thing? Is it a? Um, oh. So a need for purity. What if the void is like considered to be a contaminating thing, and um, like politics of it would be, what do we do about this? Do we do we allow people who like have been in the void to come back because they might like be contagious? Uh, like that, that could be a political aspect of it, I guess. Yeah, I like that. It's like everyone who was, who has been touched in some way by the void is like, uh, like left aside in society. I would consider like, if we do that, I would consider that my character, like they were touched by the, the maelstrom. So they, they're like considered being touched by the void. So there's, can I yeah. suggest something? Did you maybe drown and then come back? Oh, nice. That's really cool. I have another wild idea. Um, what if instead of the void being like a contamination, the void is the only pure thing? And some people want to go back to it. Um, like, I, uh, stick with me for half a second. I know that this is not how water and salt and filters and stuff work. But like maybe coffee is a big thing for us because then we can use void water to like uh, to it, exactly uh, it, uh, we can use the we can use the void water to like to brew the coffee. Uh, Does coffee somehow make it safe again? Oh yeah, coffee. Yeah, it like it makes void water safe. It's made with I don't know. coffee beans. Oh, Your world's got way more important then. Oh yes. It's, an, it's a it's awesome. a super important ritual. Uh, so I mean, you could drink purified water, or you could drink coffee. Right. Well, I I think void water, like even even with coffee, is probably special in some way. Like, or or at least we think it is. Um, yeah. So I, like that's that's different from coffee with purified water. Like that's just coffee. That's which is great, especially when you know it's like a scarce thing. But coffee with void water. Now that's maybe it gives you visions or something. Oh yeah. Yes. Well, it depends also how you feel about the void, right? Like, if you are pro yeah. void, then you're going to drink the coffee. But if you're, yeah, staunch anti void, so yes. so Ben, do you tell people what water you've made it with before you feed coffee to them? <laughs> That's a good question. It's a surprise. <laughs> yeah, I would say that, like maybe coffee with salt water like, opens your mind to the maelstrom and some people consider that to be super and some people consider that to be evil. Right. Oh, yes. Awesome. So yeah, what do, you say? <laughs> do we take the salt out of it at least, do you think? I, I think probably because, well, it depends. Do you, do you want people to know when they're drinking void coffee? I like the idea of no. I, I like the option of, yeah, like at some point someone could slip you like void coffee and you think it's regular. What do you think, Ben? This is kind of your, your field. Um, <clears throat> I don't think I want to come down on a decision right now about my what how my character feels about the void. I need to figure that out. Um, I don't think I like the idea of people drugging each other with, with void coffee as just a thing. I think I might X that out at the game. Okay. That's fine. 
Um, cool. Okay. So, so we've got politics, the void. What was the other conflict? Then, uh, oh, need for purity. Which is in here somewhere. Where is it? Um, what is our remaining conflict? Oops. What so, about barriers yeah. to access? That feels pretty relevant. Yeah, with the with the water in play. Yeah, totally. Yeah, like gotta... literal physical barriers and like metaphorical yeah. barriers as well. I like it. Yeah, like how much effort does our community put in making things accessible for everybody? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just because we've kind of like gone back and forth a bit on things, do you mind if we do like a summary of this when we end? Sure, yeah. Like what are the politics of the void? Okay. Well, we've got we've got five visuals and three conflicts. So, um, yeah, we can sum those up as like how they how they combine. Um, so, so the void uh, originates from the ocean. It's it it is the psychic maelstrom, I think, or is it maybe the source of the psychic maelstrom? Yeah. Um, it probably caused the flooding. Uh, it's it's very quiet in our enclave because like. This is where we're now an island. Uh, you have to take a boat to get to us. Um, we have mutant plants, which are like the only food plants that'll grow here because of all the salt from the flooding. Also, they're probably, you know, void resistant plants. Uh, and outdoor kitchens, which are um, not really because of any of these, because like, you know, we use potentially dangerous explosive fuels and smoke. Uh, you don't want to fill up your house with smoke and you don't want to blow up your house. So um, our conflicts are like the one thing I keep covering up here. Uh, okay, the need for purity. Um, and uh, that's, is that, that seems to be a mostly literal thing. You don't want salt getting everywhere, especially if you work with technology. Oh, nice. Yeah, methane from the rotting plants. Excellent. Um, which means that like somebody has to go out and collect rotting plants and like put them in a big compost pile under a dome and collect them. That is that is someone's job and they hate their job. They're gonna, uh, or, they're gonna get upgraded to like being responsible for fishing if they just right. keep at it. Yeah. <laughs> um, what did this person do to be inflicted with such a job? Or maybe it's like the one person in town without a sense of smell. <laughs> uh, politics of the void. Um, is this like whether just whether we think the void is uh, like a dangerous contaminant and we shun anyone who's been in contact with it? I'm sure that's like that's maybe an extreme view on one side versus like the void is. Uh, um, is the true the true purity and um, like the way of the future on the other side, or is there something a little? Or am I getting that wrong? That sounds good to me. I I think we do have two like the void and the maelstrom seem to overlap a bit. Like the, it kind of feels like we're talking about the same thing. So we could either say that's cool, or we could try to separate them into two different things. Um. I think they're connected. Uh, I don't know. What do people think? People who have more connection to the psychic maelstrom. I, I think they both came at the same time. So some people think they're connected. And it's easier to access the psychic maelstrom when you're closer to the ocean. But that's not necessarily because they're connected. Maybe it's just a hypothesis we have. Or some people have. I like that. We don't know. <laughs> That's mechanically, though, it doesn't look like the void is actually like uh, 
a faction at all. No, it's so not. it shouldn't present any problems if we end up. Um, yeah, the psychic maelstrom is a is a setting element, but the void is is not. So like that would be that maybe like the active expression of it and you know the void is is just what we call this kind of unknown source maybe there might not even be a void maybe that's just what we're like call uh that's where the psychic maelstrom comes from it's somewhere out in the ocean yeah the, the void could be something that's more like the psychic maelstrom is a fact and the void could be a more religious belief some people believe there is a void and some people just are just like nah nice. yeah i like that so like there's yeah there's like it's kind of religious and political conflict cool and uh barriers to action access again i think that's that that's mostly literal but could also be figurative um it's hard to get around in a little swampy salty island um with you know these sort of tall buildings uh where you you know you you have to you have to have a boat to get anywhere and i'm sure there aren't there isn't a boat for every person in this enclave um any other anything anyone wants to add to that would be good um well, i'm trying to think what else we could do with that um like one of the things that i'm not seeing a ton of in here i don't know if this is any good um but like uh this uh this abandoned complex probably has lots and lots of uh i don't know pro probably has lots of stuff that can be read in it but i wonder if uh like i wonder if the ability to read is uh is something that's in play like i don't know if that's interesting i'm just, no, just that, trying to think I what else so. we can what else we might be able to like pull from because like uh like thinking of uh thinking of art and smut like there's probably some really really good written smut but like you have to be educated to really enjoy that oh yeah um yeah maybe it's it's been long enough you know since the at least our our part of society fell apart that like people born after it a lot of them probably can't read it all or can only like, you know, write their name or something. Um, I, I, I'm just, I'm thinking of the, I'm thinking of what, uh, um, uh, of pity's relationship with the, the person with the storytelling kink. Like, yeah. uh, like if the, you know, if, if to get stories, you have to get that from a person from a, like a spoken tradition that that would totally be a thing. Nice. Yeah. I like that. Oh, of, literacy that's the word that i couldn't think of there we yeah, go there we go kind of going back to barriers to access do we think we're pretty um concentrated or are we spread out at all community um like, would we need a boat or a jet ski to get from the main complex to where you actually live, or is it all in the same place? That's a good question. Like the idea of like a university camp campus that feels like it's on the same space, but like there's enough, there's little fields in between everything that makes it inaccessible now that it's all flooded. Yeah, that maybe if it's not, it might not actually be completely flooded, but it would definitely be very you know swampy, um, which would be difficult to get around. Um, which actually would be even worse because like. Pulling a boat through a marsh is terrible. <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing like uh, like whenever it makes sense, we have like these makeshift bridges between buildings, yes. but most places are like the buildings are too far away from each other, so we can't do that. Like we uh, probably also have to like just constantly repair them uh, since the uh, uh, since the wood that we're dealing with is just so waterlogged. I don't know. Yeah, like that. Um, so yeah, just like salt water kind of is is everywhere, and it like corrodes. It, it corrodes the metal. It corrodes the wood. It's um, or like you know rots the wood. Um, if there were any books, they're all like soggy and the pages are stuck together. Um, 
So like the few, yeah, if, if someone brings you smut that like is printed matter, you, you, you have to like be very careful to protect it. Um, I like this. There's also another like uh, main element of the world that is the, we, we, we didn't get there yet, but uh, mm -hmm. there's the digital realm which is it's one of the the elements of the world so we ha maybe we have to think how how that fits this kind of like environment maybe we managed to get some like computers or stuff at the university to to work again and we have our, our little uh digital whatever i don't know how that will work but uh, i i just remembered I, I i never played the game i just read the book uh, I remember that's one of the elements of the, the setting. Yeah, and I think that's mostly what I work yes. with. Right. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's a... That's a... I, could, I, f I have forgotten about the digital world, so... Um, which would make sense if we were on, like, a this, you know, tech company, or, you know, uh, Office Park, Google Campus sort of uh, setup, you know. Um, we might not have internet connection to the outside world, but we could wire it up between our buildings for sure. Cool. Uh, yeah. Speaking of which, if we um, if we have all our uh, visuals and conflicts, um, yeah, let's take a look at these setting elements. So, the thing about the setting elements is like. Because everyone is the GM, everyone gets a setting element that they play, um, and you can. There, there are six of them. There are five of us, um, but you don't have to play the same one the whole time. Uh, if you, if 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 the story goes to where you know one that's not in play becomes relevant, uh, you, somebody can just pick that up and start using it. Um, it's a good idea to pick one that you will not. Or that your your character will not be dealing with, uh, because you don't want to have a scene where you're just like you're you're on both sides of that. Um, or not be dealing with a lot because you know it, it, it could happen, and in that case, you could just put it down and you know pick up a different one or hand it to someone else. Okay, I have a setting question for everyone. Something we have not talked about yet. But the society intact is an interesting idea that somewhere in this world, things are just going on as normal, like before the apocalypse. Does anybody have any thoughts about what that looks like or where that is? Mm, maybe there are um, like places that were not flooded uh, for, like as a start. Like there are some places where cities are still intact. And they can still work in some capacity. How close do we want them? Because there's some mountains like be just possible. behind them. Okay, yeah, I have no, absolutely I have no idea what the landscape is like in this place where um uh so that's that's important. Um I like the idea of you know society being being uh, society intact being um, far enough that it takes an effort to get there. It's not something you could just like walk there or in, even in a day, um, but close enough that like it's not a it's not an impossible like you know pipe dream to go there, um, and it's not. Uh, um, like it's it's totally a thing you could do now. How they'll treat people who've been like living next to the void uh, is another story. But um, I like the idea that it is, you know, accessible uh, to to us. Like you can, you can get there. Um, ben, are you thinking of the society intact? Uh, do you mean do I have ideas for it? No, no. Are you, like, are you thinking of are, are you thinking that is one that you would want to uh, that you would want to like uh, like take a responsibility for? I think I could take it for now. I don't think it. But there's others that apply to me more closely, so I could take it for sure. Are there any? What like what are the desires are like? 
what what of those is speaking to you if like if any like i know that it would sound like you were trying trying to like trying to probe to like get at one of those but like i'm curious about it from the other direction is there any of those that you would want to that you would want to represent i mean if you pick one we can make it fit yeah i'm pretty interested about uh exploring the digital realm stuff so maybe i'll take that one Um, okay, so I think my character, uh, if we deal with the outlying gangs, um, would probably be the closest connected to that, or one of the closest connected to that. Um, do we, do we want to pick ones we are? No, no, we want to pick the opposite. Okay. Uh, the opposite of what we are. Um, <laughs> that's what I'm like, I'm ruling that out. Um, uh, I don't see myself using the psychic maelstrom or like uh, my character coming in contact with the psychic maelstrom much. Um, varied scarcities could really be anyone, although I guess it's probably most relevant to the hawker. Um, hmm. Earth itself, uh, again, that could be anyone. I think e roughly oh. equally. Does anyone can have like? Can I go for that one? Okay. Um. Cool. And you're you're the stitcher, yeah. So you're probably not gonna have a ton of contact with that. Cool. Um. Yeah, I think yeah, psychic maelstrom. I think is probably the best remaining one for me. I don't know how to do anything with that. That'll be really interesting. I have not played even Apocalypse World at this point, so that'll be fun. Um, uh, Outline Gang seems a little bit close, and like Society Intact is a little question mark for me. So Yeah, um, same here with both of those. Uh, uh, um, hmm. Well, so... So I don't want to take outlying gangs because that would probably be the like if any of us were to deal with that, it would probably be me. Or it could be, yeah, it could be Robin as well. Um Society intact. I don't know. Um I don't know how much that how important that's gonna be, but I can take it for now and like you know, because because we are going to switch these around probably quite a sure. bit. Sure. Okay. So I'll take society attack for now. Well, I'll try and figure out what psychic maelstrom needs then. Okay. Oh, society attack wants self preservation, and hmm. Oh, that's so fascinating. That fervent intimacy. Can be a desire of the psychic maelstrom. I saw that and I was like, yes, that is the one. So for the digital realm, I put escapism and expanded networks. I feel like escapism is an ongoing theme that we're that we're playing with. So I like the idea of people getting the internet working and immediately being like, where's the porn? <laughs> oh, they're trying to try to like uh, break my uh, trying to get around yeah. my supply. How dare they? Rude. Just rude. Um, okay. For okay. yeah, for very uh, scarcities, I picked a scrappy DIY because uh, I think it's a thing we're gonna have a lot going around and paranoia. That's related to the. Uh, barriers for access like from the outside okay, so if, if community or our resources i i don't know if that's going to be a thing and we can change that so mm, paranoia in the sense that like uh are our barriers against the outside or like yeah okay cool that works um Cool. I think society, society attack definitely wants self-preservation. Um, 
others. Let's see, it has another option here. Um, ignorance of outsiders. Hmm. I don't know, maybe a technological solution. I mean, we're like in Silicon Valley sort of situation, right? So yeah, society of tech, so totally, they, they, they want a technological solution. Would you mind going back to pairing for a second? I'm kind of having trouble visualizing, visualizing that as a desire. Going back to? Paranoia for under varied scarcities. What are you thinking for that? Oh, oh yeah, the desire is the desire of the like that aspect of the world. So whenever uh, scarcity presents, like is presented in the game, that might be a, like in interacting with outsiders because we're afraid they're going to steal something we have, or I don't know. So, so also, we're afraid of outsiders, and they're afraid of us, pretty much. Yeah, because like yeah. we we found this like place that's, of course, like not the the world world as it used to be, but it like we have plants that somehow were developed and they live here, and we can like. Ben, uh, you were going to say something? Uh, yeah, I was going to Well, I think we missed a lot of what you just said. It, you kind of cut out. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, what I meant is uh, that paranoia is related to how we interact with outsiders and outsiders interact uh, with us. Like, we're always afraid of exchanging with outsiders or losing something we have uh, what i was going to add was um it feels like a lot of the things that we do have scarcities with um that relate to the void and the void politics and the purity like all of these things would create a lot of paranoia like people who are obsessed with drinking non -cor void corrupted water would be paranoid about like getting corrupted by the void and stuff like that so maybe it'll come into play there well, yeah, uh, I, yeah, I think that's actually a, a, a great point because, like, uh, yeah, people will be afraid of, uh, and also, like, stockpile pure water in what, whatever sense that, that works for them. I like if we're really welcoming of people into the enclave, but really totally distrust anything that they bring into uh, uh, to trade. I don't know if that works. Yeah, I like it. Um, I think there could be a lot of uh, a lot of disagreement about that. Like, uh, you know, Robin probably isn't uh, super against people bringing in things to trade, but um, you know, I'm sure the pissy killjoy next door is probably really, you know, um, really paranoid about it. Probably all depends on how you feel about the void, right? Right, and society intact, depending on which direction, you know, the, the newcomers are coming from. But also just like we have things we need and they're, they're gonna have to be compromises made. Oh, I just I just clicked on something that wasn't my responsibility, and I want to I want to pitch it. Okay. For the outlying gangs, I clicked on desires and home cooked meals is listed under <laughs> there, and I think that we definitely want the outlying gangs to desire home cooked meals. Yes, that's yeah, and uh, we have someone who provides that. So cool. <laughs> I'm imagining like this gang of people on on uh, jet skis, and all they want is soup or something. <laughs> <laughs> So Misha, do you have friends in the outlying gangs who like, or uh... I feel like I only give my soup to the people who pass my rite of passage. Oh, so okay. Not anyone can just come in and and get my soup. Cool. Coffee first, right? Coffee, then prove yourself in the rites, and then you can have some soup. 
Nice. Amazing. So question, did we all do this before joining the Enclave? Were you like one of the founding people? It depends if you want to get tokens from me by doing my <laughs> doing my rituals when we start playing or not. True. Is this a newly developed ritual? Did you used yeah. to give soup to anyone who wanted it? Or uh... I think it's it's something that I've always done, but I'm like, now I'm making it a ritual. Like now I'm making it a big deal out of it where I didn't before. Cause I'm kind of coming into this role that's kind of been thrust upon me as like the community leader. Um, and I'm kind of just making it up as I go along. And part of making it up was inventing rituals like the rites of passage. Nice. That's awesome. Sarah, I have uh, every confidence in you to develop strange new forms for the Earth to uh, <laughs> to reveal themselves to us. Very well, cool. And I, I love the ocean, and it's right there. And yep. we've already established that strange things happen out there. Although that would technically be more of a psychic maelstrom thing. But uh, mutant plants have been feeding on this water. Uh, so yeah, strange new forms. Uh, the plants are definitely tied in. Um, weird things are probably happening with the animals around here as well, although we're not seeing that because we're so isolated. Uh, the earth itself also desires trembling awe. And we have that built in with floods. Okay, well, we have characters and a world and an enclave. Um, do we do we want to do one more desire for the outline gangs? No one's handling uh, it, but sure. it might come up. Um, yeah, we could do it now, or like when someone picks it up, they could choose it. Either way. Um, let me see. One of these out outline gangs beat me up, so. Um, why would they have done that? Depending on how you want to take this mutant blood could be interesting. That could, uh, you know, my gender is void. I've, so I, th um, I could see that meaning that like, I, I also have some association with the void. I'm pro not like, I'm not the the iris, but um, maybe okay. I am weird enough to be like they want my blood. Yeah, because the only one I was thinking was territory, which would definitely be at a premium. But it's also like not something we. It's not something super interesting. More yeah. Ah, mutant blood's good. Who knows what they want to do with it, but. We also um, have a, a void kid that we need to protect. So mm -hmm. yeah, so like, I I think in this case they're like as far as they're concerned, mutants are any any void associated people. So it would be like, yeah, uh, pity and uh, the unnamed void kid, and uh, lark. And as anyone, I think that would be, I mean, really, this whole community, since we live like right there on the ocean. Uh, Joao, is uh, there anything that I can tell you about the psychic maelstrom and the picks that I made for that? Um, let me see. I... Uh, no. Oh, no. This is no. Hmm. Yeah, I think. I think the I think I I have uh, like an ideas on on how those desires uh, will work, and I just want to see if they're like compatible with your ideas. 
I want uh, I, I want to so, hear I want to hear what they mean to you because I because I, yeah, I just so, fixed them so yeah so by fervent fervent intimacy I'm thinking like because the psychic maelstrom somehow connects people because uh, some some people who have uh, psychic powers are able to read read other people's minds or feel what other people are feeling or see their their future so like uh, and the thing like through these like people the site like connects like uh and to be ushered into the world forever yeah i think that would be like the like some people like the 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 iris can decide when they want to to open their mind to the psychic maelstrom and the the, the psychic maelstrom desire is that like there's no closing of this gate. Like it's always connected, but that's dangerous. So, yeah. Okay. Cool. Those uh, both sound uh, fantastic for me. Thank you. That is what I will push. Okay, so um, I think we have an enclave and uh, um, a world and characters. So do we want to take a break and then come back and actually take it for a spin? Cool. Uh, we're not back from break for another couple of minutes, but I'm going to steal a move from one of my heroes and but in and say a couple of things that they're on the recording for uh, Bethany to hear later. Um, I think this is going awesome. I love the fact that like all of us are like able to like come in and ask questions and figure out what the heck this uh, enclave is going to be. I think that this is all going super great. I love all of the like contributions that everyone is making and you are doing an awesome job of uh, like facilitating this and getting us started. I'm super excited. Are you doing like a reality TV show style, like candid moment in the closet or whatever, like they do? Um, actually, uh, so I've been uh, really, really fortunate to get to play some games with uh, Sydney Icarus, and oh my god, they are amazing! And uh, I ended up writing a short game uh, after we played their game called Tumbling. Uh, that uh, Tumbling is like this laundry. RPG meet cute thing, and I love it so much. I want to play it with everyone. Um, but I wrote a Pacific Rim game based on that. And so we recorded like when the two of us played it. And so like we took a break. And while we were on the break, uh, they like uh, popped in and were like, hey, future Barry, here's a here's a thing. Uh, and like talked, and they are a scamp and adorable and the best. And so I wanted to, I wanted to get to do that. And so I did that. But yes, like uh, uh, a reality show confessional is a wonderful model for it, too. Hello. Hello. How's everybody doing? Doing good. Well, cool. I'm excited to see what happens when we start, like, smashing these characters into each other like action figures i have literally no idea what is going to happen in this game and that's such an, that's <laughs> such an exciting thing it's like there are many possibilities but there's no like one thing standing out as like okay clearly this is the first thing that's gonna happen which makes it a little awkward to start like okay where where do we start but uh also also there are so many possibilities There a vote going on? Hey, welcome back. I apologize ahead of time for the, I, I live um, very close to a railroad and I 
have lived here long enough that I no longer notice the trains. Um, so if you hear a, a train horn or a train various, like them putting cars together or whatever that they do that sounds like a shotgun sometimes, um, I honestly have no idea what it is they do that, that makes that noise. But uh, that's what that's what it is. There's no like big, I don't know, nothing particularly weird going on. Yeah, outside it's it's there's no there's no train right now. But um, just figured I would uh, go ahead and head that off. I'll try to mute it if it gets loud. Um, you can just incorporate it into what's going on in the game. That's the true. Game. Yes, it's the psychic maelstrom. It makes a sound a lot like a train. Like they say about tornadoes. Um, cool. Okay. Uh, right. So we're we're at that like awkward part. We're like, okay, where where do we start with this? Mail strain. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, and um, so I guess first, does anyone have like a, a scene that they just uh, that they like? That, that, that they had in mind, um, you know, while they were making their character or anything like that. Or picking a, a setting element. Or... Um, I, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at what the weak moves are. Cause like, that's how, that's how this game oh, yeah. works, right? Like yes. the, like the whole economy of this game is like, you can do a weak move to get tokens or like, you can just like take regular moves, but you need a token to do a strong move. Is that how this, like, I haven't played this. Yeah. I haven't played the, I haven't yeah. Played the other one. So that's, that's like the, like the basic economy of this. Right. Um, so I'm, so I'm looking to see if any of these make sense for me to uh, maybe frame a scene around. So that's that might that might that might also be that 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 might be a good prompt for anyone else who that's is. That's a really good place to start. Cool. You can also look at everybody's lures and try to go trigger someone else's thing to get a token from them. Oh yeah, nice. That's you know it never occurred to me like, like oh if you don't have anything to do try to get a token. <laughs> cool. Yes. Uh. uh Misha, how long have you been trying to get me high on my own supply? How long have I been putting off uh, going through the coffee ceremony? Um, well, it, I mean, it's been months now that I keep asking you about it. And you keep telling me that you're interested, but for some reason you never show up when it's time to do the coffee ceremony. How many people do you perform the coffee ceremony for at a time? Is this like a, is this like a one-on-one -on -one kind of thing or is this, or, or do you, or do you, do you actually, do you have like a, like a big pot that you can actually brew a bunch all at once? Yeah, or can you only brew a bunch all at once? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think it's better smaller, I think, because it's like the, it's so precious, right? It's so rare. Um, but I don't think it's one-on-one -on -one necessarily. Um, two or three. Two or three people. Okay. Hmm. Oh, geez. Is there is there anyone else that would be? Is there anyone else that would want to, uh, that would want to take place or take part in a uh, in a coffee ceremony? Because that might be a that might certainly be a thing. Would oh lark. Lark, yeah, I was Lark. gonna say that. Wow. Um, I, I think this is when Lark finally is like, okay, fine. I guess I have I, I have to go talk to Misha. This is gonna be like super weird because like, you know, we we broke up because I left and I didn't want to stay here and now I'm here. Uh, so I think I've been avoiding Misha for the the past couple weeks that I've been here, but I can't put it off any longer. Well, I think that we need to get you, I think we need to get, get you back on your feet. And like, if you're going to be a member of this community, then like, you're going to have to take part. I, and I'm, I'm sorry that you're uncomfortable about it. Um, I think the, the, the flip side of that is that I'm also going to have to take part because it would be, it would be wildly rude for me to turn it, uh, to turn Misha down. Like after all this time, when I'm literally there uh, as she's brewing the coffee. Yes. Cool. Okay. Excellent. 
Um, Should I start the scene or would you like to? Um, well, what's, yeah, what, what, what is, uh, what Demisha's like preparations for this look like, I guess, that we can walk in on? Okay, so I think, I think Misha's main um, area where she takes care of her ceremonies is in the cafeteria of the kind of main building. Um, so it's a really kind of ostentatiously large um, space. Uh, there's massive columns that reach up to the ceiling that are like 30 feet um, high. You can see like where there's offices that look out over the cafeteria. Um, there's counters and stuff like that. Uh, most of the furniture has been cleared out at this point. So it's really just like a big open space. Um, and Misha has her set up for brewing coffee, just kind of like perfectly laid out. She's very, um, uh, orderly. She keeps everything very clean. Um, and I think we just see her kind of like, just you know, slowly walking around, humming a tune to herself as she like prepares each individual ingredient, lays everything out in its in its place before kind of preparing um, preparing the coffee. So I think that's like a solitary thing for her until people show up for the ceremony itself. And uh, I think that we are definitely taking Finch's jet ski across the campus, um, and uh, it's. Uh, this is not a this is not like a like a two seater jet ski and so uh like i uh I, th I think that like you you have you have like two choices lark um one is to uh uh one is to like uh try and do like the holding on to the back of the seat thing okay. uh like you see uh, like you see motorcyclists doing sometimes uh or uh or one uh, the other option would be to uh like to put your arms around robin yeah uh, how do you how do you ride along Oh, I start out holding onto the back of the seat, but like you, you hit like hit a, um, uh, maybe just like a, a little place where the you know the the ground comes up and the, the water is super shallow, and like I almost go flying, so I like give up and you know put my arms around you and hold onto you. Um. Okay. Cool. Um. So I think, yeah, I think the, I think the jet ski gets like, um, I think it gets like there, the prop is like all muddy, uh, and, uh, uh, and from like, from across the enclave, like Finch can hear the, uh, can hear the engine, uh, turning and like spinning the prop in this, uh, in this, like in this choppy mud, um, uh, the, the small like uh bluish gray uh plume of smoke uh uh kind of just coming up from the uh coming up from the engine as we uh um as we get it free would this be the natural world i don't know sarah you tell me sounds like yes but you're doing an excellent job describing it despite being in it i mean i don't have anything particular in mind do we yeah proceed I mean, if you want to like set, uh, you know, what what this landscape and what this environment is like, this would be a good time. Okay. Um, there's a kind of brackish smell in the air from all the salt water, and it's it's not particularly deep anywhere. Um, like we probably could actually walk in most of these places. It's just that like the sediment and like probably refuse and stuff is collected and made it just not great water to be walking through um even if you have the gear for it so this is the preferred method of transport um there's like there's seaweed that's come in and you have to be careful of that getting uh tangled up in the jet ski there are birds um further out toward over the bay um, just in the distance, clouds of them moving from one place to the other. Small, black. Can't hear them though, it's too far out. Cool. Um, so, so water that, you know, it's, it's, it's brackish, so it has some salt in it. Is it, uh, is it considered to be 
void water, pure water, something in between? Like, how do people feel about this water? I think there's enough earth mixed in with it in this place anyway, that it's not considered void water. The void water has to be purer, either from the bay or the sea. Oh, I want to change something on my character sheet now. Oh, it's the worst. Cool. Uh, no, go ahead, change it. Um, because because uh, when you said we had uh, we had this uh, this brackish uh, uh, this brackish but uh, but earthy water, like uh, I think that I uh, how do we distill that? How do we distill that? Because I want because I definitely want uh, I want to replace art with liquor. I'm going to keep the smut. <laughs> yes. Um, um, seaweed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That totally works for me. I like that a lot. Uh, again, thank you for the indulgence. Um, cool. Sorry, I'll butt back out. No, that's that's really cool. <laughs> seaweed liquor. Worse than like that's that's like when you you don't even have potatoes. Seaweed is your next step. Cool. Yeah. So I. Um, Mutant potatoes. That's true. We do have mutant plants. The 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 plants the plants are important, but so is the so is the source of water. So yeah, cool. Um, cool. Um, so so I think after uh, like after uh, kind of digging in with the with the jet ski for uh, for a minute, we're able to uh, get ourselves loose and we uh, and we make our way uh, over into the um like the, the the commissary it sounds like um and uh uh do i know that you know misha at this point um probably i've been like showing up to to trade here um you know just like stuff that i've found okay out in like other flooded buildings that are further out um and uh yeah, so so I think like people here mostly know me. Um, I just haven't like stayed for very long before. Okay, um, then I think uh, like I'll I'll get off the jet ski in the like in the knee deep water, um, and uh, um, like I'll I'll offer you my shoulder if you want to hobble in on uh, on one leg. Uh, and uh and yeah i'll take you i'll take you in for uh for your coffee ceremony oh, I'm, so, yeah. I'm so excited for you <laughs> yes thank you for the support uh um yeah finch still has my leg and uh yeah you know they they've they've like thought they were finished many times and it just never works right so hopefully they'll have it fixed this time um yeah like hobble and kind of leaning on you and just like show up yeah, they, they, they say that about it they say that about everything Everything takes longer than uh, than they originally say. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay, that's. I mean, that's good to know that it's not just me. I was starting to worry there. No. Um. So, uh, so we come in through the uh, coming through the front, and uh, and Misha. Uh, uh, what do you what do you want to what do you want to do? Yeah. So I think at this point, everything's laid out and ready for the ceremony. Um, and she sees the two of you arrive at the front door um, and just her face lights up, walks over to the two of you. Lark, I'm so happy you finally came. And Robin, wow, you're here. Uh, Ed, uh, I think that I'm, uh, I think that I'm, I like, uh, as, uh, as I get uh, Misha uh, inside and like out of the, uh, out of the knee deep water, um, like I'll uh, um, I'll sit down and like uh, just have a uh, um, like have a quick pull from uh, from something, um, and uh, as I'm and as uh, as I'm doing that, like I'm I'm thinking of myself as like bringing uh, bringing Misha to this, and I think I'm quickly realizing that oh no, I can't get out of this, and uh, and I have the I have that brief spit take. Um, uh, when you, cause like, I'm just expecting you to address Misha. Like, I'm just, this is, this is just like, uh, like another, but, uh, but yeah, when you, when you name me, uh, I'm like, oh no, I'm here for this now. 
Yeah. And when Misha sees you like pull out a, a flask or whatever, um, she kind of just gives you a stern look like, please, just coffee for now, okay? And that's like that's what I know that it's that 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 I'm cooked, uh, and so I uh, so I tuck it back into uh, back into my jacket. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think I think like the there's you know this kind of like expression you know across his lark's face like they expected they expected you know uh, Misha to be like angry or at least sort of cold, and instead they're like. Or, or she she's uh just like very friendly and welcoming and um yeah i think it's like like is confused a little and then relieved and then suspicious and then confused and then, yeah um uh isn't quite like just um just like happy because or yeah like uh I, I think that that Lark is still a little bit like okay, you know, last time I saw you, you were mad at me. What's up? You know, a little suspicious still. Um, but yeah, they kind of like lean against or like put one hand against the wall until they uh, have made their way to the. Um, uh, where where are we in this? Or like where where? So there's this great big empty cafeteria, right? Um, <laughs> uh so like where in that is is our like is the area you do these coffee ceremonies mm, i think probably not here i think i probably usher you out of the cafeteria um and i say i'm gonna have to prepare the coffee it will take a few minutes but come and and get comfortable and i bring you to like a little um like a room outside of the cafeteria i suppose maybe it was like a whatever a break room or something like there used to be ga video games or something here and now it's just oh, like nice, pillows yeah. and like fabrics and stuff so i'm like just have a seat and i'll make us some coffee the, yes the the sacred beanbag lounge in which the coffee ceremony takes place nice that's so great <laughs> yeah so i guess misha goes um brews coffee and in, in her favorite uh drip coffee machine or, or whatever um comes back with a, a just a simple wooden tray three mismatched mugs um one probably says world's best dad on it and one has like a cartoon on it um and sets the tray down in the middle of us sits on a beanbag uh, now it's time for the ceremony to begin this is so important to me. I'm so happy that the two of you have come here and are finally going to join our community for good. The shade of that. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> no, right. Um, uh, I'm happy to be here, Misha. I, I missed you. I missed you too. Is this gonna be this oh, kind of thing? Oh, bad, yeah. Can you can you can you just pour it already, please? <laughs> sure, Robin. Of course. Hands you the world's best dad mug. Cheers. What's up her mug yeah. to the two of you? Uh, yeah, uh, cheers. I, I I think I've never like seen one of these ceremonies because because of the connotations that like this is, means you're part of the community so i've not only not taken part in it but i've never seen it so i have no idea what what they entail so i'm just like imitating um robin um and i think that like having ridden the having ridden the jet ski in and uh like having to um like having to anchor that like i'm still like i'm still a little bit wet and it's uh it's with the uh with all the um like my hands are just like a little bit waterlogged and so like i'm holding the mug with um with both hands and um just like uh just like warming and drying and like it's it's really unclear whether this is like a moment of like uh uh like holding this sacredly or if i'm just like 
really like just taking comfort in the like in the very simple comfort of it. I I think this is part of the ceremony, so I'm holding my cup the same way. Perfect. You know, the coffee's not going to bite. It's delicious. Try it. She just takes a sip, <laughs> trying to lead by example. Hey. Oh, okay. Okay. I'll, I'll take a sip. And is this void coffee? That that's out of question? Or out of character, I mean? No. 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 Okay. Um, yes, I think I just like a sip. Oh, it's, you're right. This is, I, I forgot what coffee tasted like. It's very important to me. And when we have coffee together, we can share. This is what being in a community means, is that we can be together and speak openly. So, you know, if you have any problems or anything that I can help you with, just let me know. Uh, yeah, in instead, of, uh, instead of answering that question, I'm going to start drinking very deeply. Um, and it burns my tongue and I like you make this it's so hot for this ceremony and I don't know why it's so hot like <laughs> I know I know what beans you're using for this I know where you got them it's much better at like it, it it's much better at about three quarters this temperature but uh but no I, I I'm I'm gonna hold I'm gonna I'm gonna uh step in a steep in that discomfort <laughs> I think Misha sees, you know, sees you taking such a big drink and kind of sees you flinch a little bit, even if you're trying to hide it. But she doesn't say anything to you about it. Brutal. Nice. Yes. Um, hmm. Kind of looking at my my weak moves, and there are a few I could use. I. Uh... I've found the regular moves to be just a good guideline for how to act in the scene if you don't know how to act in the scene. Yeah, I made the active choice not to get caught lying, cheating, or sneaking and right. not drink the coffee. I figured let's 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 go with the lure and uh, and I'll get my uh, get my token out of That's that. I can lie and cheat later. Um Oh, okay. So I so I, I will use a regular move here. Um and I guess this is a this is a player question rather than a character question, but I think it could. I think you can answer either way, um, either in or out of character. But, uh, um, yeah, what does Misha need help with currently? Uh, Misha always needs help gathering gathering the plants and fishing and and bringing food the more food we have the more people Misha can feed and that's that's what she really cares about so right, okay well as soon as I get my leg back um yeah maybe maybe I can go I can go fishing well now that you're a member of the community it will be important for you to contribute Yeah, um, that is, uh, you know, I used to do that by, by leaving and coming back, but, uh, I don't know. I think it's getting dangerous out there that a lot of gangs and a lot of, a lot of fighting and it's, uh, one person on their own is, uh, I don't know. I don't know that I'd last long. Uh, I but I can fish. Definitely don't want to hear the uh, the rest of that. Um, and so I'm going to uh, I'm going to gulp down the coffee and then bolt for the nearest exit. You're just getting up and and running. Uh, oh. Either that, or I can lie fairly convincingly and say, "Oh, I I, uh, I think I forgot to tie up the jet ski." Finch will be pissed. Okay, Robin. Well, I'm I'm so happy you came, anyways. Uh, and I uh, like I'll like I'll give uh, uh, I'll give wink. Uh, I'm going out of the room. 
and I'm going to take a lure token because I participated. In, did I participate in your ritual enough? I drank the whole coffee. That counts, right? Yep. Now you're a member <laughs> of the community. Uh, I kind of always was, but I appreciate that you think so now too. That's very important to me. Good. Are you sticking around, Lark? Um. Yeah. Uh, so okay. So so do we hear the jet ski starting up outside at this point, or? Uh, no, no. I uh, I I did promise to uh, I did promise to bring you here and back. Um. So so no, okay, I'm, I'm cool. not uh, I, I'm not going for the uh, not going for the full bolt. I, I was gonna say, uh, you know, right now I have one leg. It would be kind of hard to cross the marsh. Um, <laughs> um, I well, I mean, I am at least here until Robin gets back, um, which I think will be a little longer than it takes to tie up a jet ski. I know that you find it hard to stick around places for very long, but if there's anything I can do to make you feel more comfortable sticking around here, just just tell me. I'll help you. Um, yeah, I will. I don't... Uh, this is this is new. I I I don't know, but if if I if there's something, I'll tell you. Okay. It was good to see you. Yeah, yeah. You too. This was um. Uh, I think I'm gonna confess something here. Um, I'm not sure if I'm seeking forgiveness because it's uh. It's more of an embarrassing thing than a like. Um, uh, but I, I think yeah, I'm just like, I. I was so sure that you would be that like you were still mad at me that. Uh, I, sorry, I've been I've been like. I, I've been avoiding you. Since I got here, I got, I've actually been here for two weeks. But um, yeah, and then and then I get here, and it's and you're you're nice, and it's I don't I don't know I, I I'm sorry. I guess I made uh I guess I made an assumption there. I guess I guess I thought you know I don't know I thought worse of you than you deserved. No, I mean, I get it. Um, when you left, I got really angry. I'm not going to lie. I didn't, uh, I couldn't really handle it, but I'm not one to hold grudges. And now you're here. So what's to be angry about, right? That's, that's why you're the, um, do you have a title? Uh, I'm just Misha. Uh, that's why you're Misha. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think at that, that point, like, okay, that is that is enough confession for the moment. <laughs> like, get up and um, again, like, kind of lean on the wall and hop, hobble. Um, uh, I'm sure would give you a hand. Yeah, yeah. I, I think like keep going and then finally again it's it's like uh trying not to like lean on somebody or hold on to somebody but fuck <laughs> uh, i'm never gonna get out of this room otherwise and it's nice of course because like i keep avoiding you and then like I'm wondering why and get out to the jet ski And has um, has Finch come out to see like what damage we've done to their jet ski? Yeah, I definitely want to meet you guys when you come back <laughs> to return it because presumably you will return it. I didn't give it to you. Um, 
So, so maybe yeah, when you, I think we're saying that the buildings are partially flooded on the ground floor or sandbagged or something. I think it depends on the building. Like the ones on higher ground, they're probably like, there's probably some ground around them that's okay. And then others are probably like the first floor is flooded. I don't know. Given my work, I think I would be in one that had, um, <clears throat> there was somewhat higher. So there's probably like this makeshift dock set up in front that you'll pull up to. And I, I definitely like, hear the motor be like a long way off because sound carries over water. And I would come out to meet you. Um, Just curious, do you hold on to Robin on the way on this ride as well? Yeah, I think once I've done it once, that it's kind of I'm kind of resigned. I'm like, okay, yeah, I guess I guess this is who I am now. I lean on people and like hold on to people to get around. And man, I wish I had my leg back. So I think I'm going to use a regular move and fix or make something partially or shoddily. So when you come out, you see that I am holding your leg, um, but it is clearly not in the state that you're used to. Um, it, it's more, it is definitely more of like a, regular prosthetic as opposed to the like mechanical like fully functioning thing you're used mm -hmm. to yeah like it used to actually have some sort of have like power you know coming from yeah, like the, the knees locked in place yeah you know? but oh well it's it's better than nothing um and you know probably probably one of the things that that finch can't get right is actually a, a glitch in it that i've gotten used to and um like they can't recreate it because it's not how it's supposed to be mm. all right so do you want to i think i wait until you guys pull up and like are firmly docked and then kind of like tilt my head toward you and said it, it's not it's not done I'll, I'll fix it i promise but do you want this for now yeah yeah, you know, better. And you, I need to talk to you too. Oh, the Lark's a whole member of the community now. They can go out. Uh, they can go back out and get some of the uh, uh, some of those ribbon tapes. I don't want ribbon tapes. I want. No, actual... everybody wants ribbon tapes. Come on, <laughs> Robin. Whatever. Okay, come on, come in. Uh, and I'll yeah. like take both of you into the workshop, I think, but taking um, Lark further in, like where I actually do things, Robin gets to wait in like the antechamber where it's moderately clean. Oh, I think, uh, I think like uh, as you're, as you're like helping Lark in uh, on their, uh, on their glitchy leg, uh, um, I'm like, I'm leaned over the dock and just like making sure that like all of the mud is out of like the, uh, out of the intake on the, uh, um, uh, on the jet ski. And so when I come in, my hands are filthy. Cause I would yell at you otherwise. Uh, yeah. So I think I, it's like, uh, invite you to sit on like a workbench and sort of without really asking your permission to do this at all. Mm -hmm. um, just like pull your leg up and like slot it in and start like messing around with it. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't ask, just, yeah, just this whole thing yeah. silently. Yeah, no, I think that's, I think <laughs> I prefer that. Like, okay, instead of having a conversation about this, this is, uh, yeah, this could be the digital realm. Uh, I think your leg is less digital. That's yeah. I'm used to. Yeah, I think that that's the problem, right? It is that it's not mm. it's not what you're used to working with. Mm. Um, it's more just purely mechanical. Yeah, but like I'm like strapping it on a little too tight. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I'm just like moving it and making sure that it's locked and then like, okay. And like pulling you to your feet. Yeah. Um, walk, walk around just a circle. It's fine. And I, I do. And it's, you know, it's better than leaning on walls. Uh, it's better. It's better than clinging to people all the time. So it's, it's great. It's, um That's yeah i can enough. definitely walk around with this it's not good enough okay whatever it will do for now um you robin you can go it's fine <laughs> unbelievable i would like to take a token for treating someone like an object and not a person amazing So good. How do we get pity in, in this? Yeah, well, I'm trying to come up with something, but if anyone has any ideas. I do want to have a conversation with Rob. Do you want to think about ways you can maybe come into that? Sure, yeah. What are we going to talk about? Um, the supplies that I need. Ooh, um, I, I think that I uh, can't stop myself from like uh, in the uh, uh, like in your workshop, like uh, like touching and examining and looking at everything with my with my filthy hands. And like I my attention is very much focused on Lark while all of this is going on. So I probably don't notice. But then I like turn around and see your fingerprints on everything. Can, can I jump in for a sec with a digital mm -hmm. realm thing? Yeah. Um, Robin, so you're you're poking around and you see a screen that's displaying something, something that that is kind of jarring to you. You see a glimpse into the digital realm, and I'm curious what 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 do you see? Oh, that's rough. Um, what the what what kind of like what kind of size of device are we are we talking about that this is on? I'm trying to I'm trying I'm to picture like what a, the... like a little screen. You know, it's got like it's kind of just like a little LCD screen with like wires that are connected to some like little microprocessor or something like that. Okay, so um, it's like really low resolution. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, well, I see that's on there. Um, uh, one of the desires of the digital realm is expanded networks. So like maybe there's like a new internet developing or something like that. Maybe you're seeing a picture from elsewhere. Okay. Um, oh, I need a hot second to figure out what the heck this could possibly be. This is when you hear Lark like leaving and falling down the stairs. Oh, Lark. oh no! <laughs> it's it's fine. I'm fine. Is it working at least? Yeah. I, in fact, I think that. Did helped. you break it again? No. I, I I think I think it it's it's less stiff now. Hey. It's not supposed to be less stiff. It works fine. It's fine. Everything's good. Uh, can I can I say that Pity uh, walks in now? Yeah, in, in fact, like I think I think like I you know probably literally run into you as I'm like getting up and yelling back. Yeah, and then and then you come. <laughs> so Pity Pity comes like uh, they're very uh, blase. They're never like is expressing a lot of emotion, but they they look down at the at the leg and they look up to to Finch and say. That leg's gonna stop working tomorrow. Great. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I did not catch that. I'll enjoy my day of freedom. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, and I, I think from uh, like from down the uh, from down the stairs or uh, or down the down the um, down the hallway from the the workroom um uh 
uh, if this is too cute, tell me. But like the, I think that the uh, the image that shows up on the LCD is uh, like a it's like an advertisement for something that has like cut in and then cut out, and uh, and there's like a uh, and uh, there are the words uh, across it that uh, um, that I can I can read at least a couple of them, uh, and it says a day of freedom. It's like in a like a, like waving on like a like a little flag underneath. Um, uh, uh, it's oh what what, what is this going to be an ad for uh, on our shitty new internet? So is this a society intact? Yeah. Uh, day of freedom. It's um the society intact one look. Oh, a technological so solution and self-preservation. Okay. Um, so, yeah, a day of freedom. Um, so I think the ad, like, it's, um, it's not like high quality, you know, it's, it's kind of, you know, because this is like, they're just starting to get it up and running again, right? So um, it's like 8-bit, you know? Um, but it's this cartoon of like, um, sort of menacing figures coming into this town. Um, I think like, it, it's, it's not pictured as like this, you know, large city. It's pictured as like this, you know, kind of very um, suburban, area um and like and then like those those figures they just dis disappear there's nothing like um not you know there, it doesn't show like what why they disappear they're just like gone and then the people like you know people come out of their houses and they're like celebrating and it's you know it's eight bit uh there's there's not a lot of nuance here um but uh, then, you know, the day of freedom, like, kind of, you know, kind of shows, you know, uh, expands, there we go, gets bigger. <laughs> um, uh, and just like kind of hovers over them. And it's like freedom from, uh, from, from paranoia. And yes, English, I'm good at it. Uh, <laughs> I, I, thank, thank you for <laughs> accepting my punt. Uh, that's no, I, I think that's, I think that's like, uh, like an awesome, like foreshadowing of yes. like some, of some, like some outside force. That's yeah. So yeah. So, so Ben, does that, does, does uh, me going through three other people to answer your question about what it is <laughs> that disturbs me on the screen? Uh, how, how's that for you? That's wonderful. It's super interesting to hear that the society intact is, is trying to reach out via the digital realm. That's cool. Nice. Okay, so what's happening on the stairs with uh, Pity and Mark? Um, I, I, uh, Pity just told Lark that their their leg was going to stop working tomorrow, and yeah, I think Lark's just like, I, I better enjoy my day of freedom then, and like kind of stomps mm -hmm. off and like to go to go fishing. And uh, yeah, so Pity goes, I think, walks in at this point. How is the work leaving though? Um, with their with their currently working leg that'll work for the rest of today, hopefully, because <laughs> it's not going to stop until or it's not, not going to fail until tomorrow, according to uh, to Pity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Pity Pity uh, walks in with like this. Uh, like this old uh, grocery store bag, and they're like just carrying it. And th they actually came to see Finch because they need something fixed. Uh, oh, how do I feel about you? Is you do weird things? I think I was like gesturing to Robin to like come over and I've got like a cloth in my hand and I intend to go like clean up all the all the fingerprints. And you see um, Finch look up and like most of their face is kind of covered 
So it's hard to tell an expression, but like body language is like, uh, <laughs> and I say, what are you bringing in here right now? None of, none of that future fortune telling stuff. Okay. This is a place of science. And technology yeah it's all science i guess uh remember that that uh, little screen uh you gave me where i could read uh, those uh stories our friend uh robin found uh, it 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 stopped working i don't know what's happening and uh uh pity takes out of the this uh, grocery store bag uh something that looks like a tablet or ebook reader or something yeah it, that kind of stories <laughs> and uh, they just put it on the table and they're like i have no idea what to do with this now what what did you do with that i was just using it and it stopped and it working. just broke okay i'm not sure it's broken maybe it's just temporarily malfunctioning that's what broken is called I guess as long as someone fixes it. Okay, and, so and, look, okay, I've, really I've kind cool. of got another project done right now, so it's gonna be a few days. Are you cool with that? It's okay. Uh, and then they just leave it there, and then they look to is uh, Robin still there? Yes. Uh, continuously dirtying things. <laughs> and then uh, Pity just says, like, in a very monotone voice, hey, Robin. Because, like, they, they know Robin's kind of, like, trying to pry, at, at, like, at, trying to find out this, like, secret Pity supposedly has about. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, so Finch. Um... I'm going to spend a token to call in a timely favor from a powerful friend. And that's you. Uh, Cause I really, I just really, I really need you to fix this for pity. Cause like, um, cause as soon as Lark gets out there and uh, brings back some ribbon tapes, I think I've got some things that pity, I think you are going to like, but, I, but, you, but we got to get this thing up and working, right? Come on. Question. I have to do this thing if the token is spent, yes. Uh, I don't... Well, I guess uh, uh, this. there's definitely a question of how much narrative authority I can have. This is a, like, a, like a weird not string thing. Um, I am calling you a powerful friend. But it's not like he's... The, the move says call in a timely favor. So it's, it's more like he's, you know... He, He's calling in the favor. Whether you actually do the favor for him or not is, is totally up to you. True. Mm -hmm. Look, I, I want to work on the leg first, but there's there's stuff I need from you. So, like, can I give you a list of shit I need, and then I'll work on this while you get it for me? What do you need? What do you need right now? And I... Take, I guess I've put it down on a piece of paper. Lots of like little drawings of complicated pieces of machinery that I do not have. And like, I think I know what I need, but I like, I have to try it out the hell is before this? I know what it works. Look, this is just, I, I think this is right. It's got, see these two wires here. You want a red one and a blue one. And then they've got to have this part here and just like going on about all this. But it's got to be exactly uh, 0.08 inches. Can you get this? I mean, of course I can get it, but yeah, no, just you know, get Pity's thing working. It'll be good. Uh, come on, just you, just for fun. Why is it so important to you? Uh, it's important to Pity. It's important to me. Come on. I didn't know you guys were super close friends. It it's also important to my friend who's waiting to hear these stories. Look, I think personally, you guys spend way too much time with stuff that's not actually happening in this world, okay? But whatever. 
oh, I'll fix it. Okay. And depending on what's wrong with it, it's probably going to take like maybe a day or two or maybe an hour. I, I got, I'll check it out and see what's what and get back to you with a, an ETA. Okay. 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 Uh, okay. And I'll start. I'll start uh, walking out of the workshop and uh, and hollering for Lark because uh, it sounds like we got a job to go do. And it, as you leave, you hear um, Finch just saying, "You've touched everything in here." <laughs> <laughs>